Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here tonight. Uh, welcome to all of our new subscribers out there and those of you trying out Annex 15 for the first time. I hope you're having a decent experience. The uh, As with any point zero release, sometimes there's a little few kinks here and there to work out, but all over and all, I, I think Annex 15 has been a pretty good release. That said, there's always room for improvement and I thought I'd go over... Uh, I did a quick survey of the forums and look for issues people are having with the final system and I thought I'd give you uh, I was gonna call it a top five list but I don't think I'm going to because it's just a list of little annoyances little bugs things that don't warrant a video on their own but uh, maybe we'll go over them here all at once so call it five antics annoyances just to show you know that I'm not a total annex fanboy uh, well I am but uh, uh, there are always things to check out. Now, the first, and we'll go into the control center. Now, the the problem isn't the control center itself. Uh, this is a shout out to Skidoo in the uh, forums. He is always concerned about the mouse setting app, and the mouse setting app is a little different from a lot of mouse setting app, mouse settings apps that you see in other operating systems. Um, it kind of requires you to direct input some multipliers, which is fine. Uh, it works. It works just fine. Uh, but if I, I don't know what those numbers mean exactly, like acceleration, I kind of understand. Threshold, not so much. But it doesn't show you what the value is. But here, uh, starting with, although you can restore the defaults. Okay, that's cool. So, uh, and Skidoo has. Uh, brought this up on numerous occasions in the forums and I, I do happen to know that this is being looked at at this time for hopefully a future update to where we'll get something like that. I'd just like to put in my two cents. Um, it'd be nice to see in this age of touchpads, uh, even my desktop computer in my living room uses a touchpad these days, uh, it would be nice to see an interface for Sin client on the app so that I can turn off the the touchpad while I'm typing. This is a, a setting I've gotten used to in MX on XFCE. Uh, you can do it by hand with Sin Client in Annex, but it'd be nice to have that available in the GUI app application. Okay, so that's less of annoyance, more of a set of well, it annoys some people more than others. Um, number four on my list is the network monitor. Now, as you can see, this is a fresh boot up here of Annex, and you see there's no network monitor on in the button bar. Now, I've turned off Conky because when I'm recording, Conky tends to get make things um, a little irritated. On on uh, it, 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 I'm, I haven't found the perfect combination of apps uh, of uh, recording software for Annex at the moment. Um, there we go. There's the conky. Now the conky, when you're when you're operating, it does show your LAN up, your LAN down, whatever you got going on in the uh, in the conky display. But not down in the tr system tray, where a lot of people expect it. Most uh, modern operating systems these days do put some sort of little network icon down here in the corner. Now it is available in Annex, but it is not configured by default. Uh, we use YCD or Wicked, depending on who you ask how it's pronounced. If you go on the Connect Wirelessly app, you'll see here, oh it pops up. Great, and if you close it, the icon stays down in the corner after you close it, but it's a drag to have to open and close, open and close the settings app just to see your little connection doohickey. So the way you can start that manually without opening up the main settings dialog or the main white CD app is to run ycd dash client slash t and that will put that in the in the corner. I like to put that in my startup my startup files and here lately I've been using the new startup files, let's see it's under session, startup files for desktop session to do this kind of thing. 
and I'll just put it right here on startup ycd client slash t and then an and sign I'm not sure you need the and sign in this particular case but I'm going to put it in because this actually runs the window manager is already started by the time this runs so that will start automatically the next time I boot up my system not running that in the no no the the funny thing is is that YCD or Wicked whatever you want to call it is running in the background already the only thing that's not showing up is the little the little network monitor it, it saves a tiny bit of RAM um, but it is there for you if you do want to have it up um, and if you're a CNE, if you're old school configuring your networks via CNE or with slash etc slash network slash interfaces well YCD will still show you when you're connected it's smart enough to do that okay the next kind of minor annoyance I've seen in the forums quite a bit is how do you set a default app whoops I should close the control center there are a couple of ways to, to set a default app and it kinda depends on what you mean um, there's one way we have under preferred applications this lets you set it is labeled set default applications for a terminal web mount web browser file manager email client etc etc except it's not really setting the default app for the system what it's doing is setting the default app for the shortcut links terminal file manager web browser editor and actually under the applications menu under preferences you get the others image viewer um, video player uh, somewhere is audio player there's audio player that's what this app controls these shortcut settings um, it's not quite up to par with where XFCE is with its preferred app its default applications app or its preferred applications app but it's not meant to be either um, Annex is stripped down to run on older hardware or limited hardware I've had a perfectly functional system running in 192 megabytes of RAM I'm not saying you'd want to go run Chrome on it or maybe even Firefox with a two tabs open but running Dillo and the Streamlight app that works so it's perfectly usable system and you know living without some of the niceties of the desktop environment the major desktop environments is what makes that happen so anyway I digress that is one that is one meaning of default applications the next meaning and in my mind this is the more common meaning let's say you're in your file manager and you want to open a file oh this is terrible I don't even have a file to open I wasn't thinking ahead I'm gonna open the editor and this is a file and I'm gonna save now you see that our editor is genie test file save it in my home folder so I can find it okay so now we have a file in our home folder test file now if I click on this it should open in genie except it doesn't it opens in leafpad that's because there are multiple ways each of the file managers rocks and space FM use a slightly different system to determine what app that they're what app they're going to launch a file with now I've gotten quite used to opening files directly from the file manager and rather than opening an app first and then opening the file it just seems faster to do it in one step you can see the space FM continues to do this with leafpad as well in space you can if you want to use a different app you can go to edit and the list is here this is very similar to how uh, Windows XP did it with its open with menu you can choose a different app and if you want you can actually uh, click, come down here to the choose button and you can pick a different app I want Genie and I can set it as the default and click OK now it opens in Genie and now every time I come back it will open in Genie and in fact all text files will open in Genie that way if I go to rocks it's still going to open in leafpad there you go still opens in leafpad that's because rocks uses a slightly different system it does look at MIME types 
but it doesn't use the MIMETOP database that, the, that everything else on the planet uses to figure out what uh, app to use to start a file. It rocks, honestly, was written in an age when everybody was still trying to figure this stuff out and there was a rocks desktop once upon a time in development that um you know it made sense if you were living in an entirely rocks environment so it this is actually only weird because antics has more than one file manager by default and, and supports three different window managers um so you know you you live like we get so you, in rocks you right click on the file that you want to start and so set run action and it'll show you what the action is and I'm just going to change it to Genie. You can also drag it from a rocks menu, a rocks window to this area here, uh, a file from user slash user slash bin, for instance, and that will set it as well. So I'm going to say use the command, and now we'll open in Leafpad or Genie rather. Now we've got number two and number one it was a toss up for me uh, as which of these was the bigger irritation. Um, both of them I've learned to live with over the years. Most of us in the Annex world have lived will live with it over the years. But I went with number two being the forum bug. What is the forum bug, you say? Well, let's say I want to reply here to a thing. And I'm going to say I'm going to reply with something. I'm just going to say something with slash Etsy slash network in it. And I'm going to hit submit. And it's going to say, oh, forbidden. You don't have permission to post on the server. Well, that's ridiculous. What it is is anything with with a slash and Etsy close together, right here. This right here is the problem. The form software detects that as a problem. We don't control the form software. The Annex folks don't control the form software. So we've just been kind of living with it for years now. And the quick solution is to just put a space between the slash and the Etsy. This is kind of the convention that's come along on the on the system. So if you click that, it will go through. So there you go. I posted it. View my submitted message. And there it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete it real quick because I don't need people. I don't want to confuse people with that post. Okay, that's the forum bug. Just put a slash between the, just put a space between the slash and the Etsy. That catches a lot of new users, almost as many as as confusing the shout box at the top of the screen with a search bar. Happens a lot. Happens all the time. Now I've got one other big um, annoyance with Annex. This one catches a lot of new users as well, and that is removable media storage devices for instance do not auto mount the concept of mounting a device is sometimes foreign to people from the windows world or even from operating systems like oh ubuntu uh... and the like where the desktop environment file daemon file manager daemons take care of auto mounting even mx will auto mount a a device when you insert it, it pops up. There's a volume manager. It's it's what a lot of people come to expect. Well, that's one of the th you know all that 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 daemon sitting there takes up resources. It's it's Antix's, um, shall we say, mission is to operate on older hardware. You know that's just one of the things that's been limited over the years. The good news is, is that you can mount your media. I have a USB stick uh, inserted in my drive right now and I'm going to go to slash media and you can see that it's not there. Now this is using the Rocks file manager. This is primarily a problem with Rocks. Rocks actually needs some help from UDEV and a few other things before these devices are seen. It's either got to be visible in the FS tab, F -stat, F -F -S -tab file or it's got to be somehow made visible to Rocks. It, the device is installed, is is mounted. So I'm gonna go to Space FM and show you that it is there. And in fact, Space, as soon as I open it, will mount the device. And here it is. It's SD1. You can see the mount points come up. And actually, if you watch over here, you can watch the drives become available. And there they are. And they are available in either of the file managers. Okay. Well, that's cool. Uh, so that's easy enough. Just use Space FM. 
for your file mounting needs. Now there's, there's other ways to do it. There's a mounting tool in the control center. Um, uh, you can do it from the command line if you want to. There's there's a whole host of Linux ways to do this. But the easiest graphical way for new users is just to open up Space FM and mount it. Except for one problem. Watch carefully and we'll close Space FM. Ah, you see my mount points disappeared. Ah! For whatever reason, Space FM is configured by default and it's, it's not an antics default, it's a default from upstream it's configured to unmount your devices as soon as you disconnect there they come back as soon as you disconnect as soon as you close space fm i don't know what how i don't understand this default but if you go into the devices menu of space fm go down to settings uh let's see here auto mount i believe and uncheck unmount on exit because you know you might want to mount the device with Space FM and then open up an app like I don't know maybe it's a maybe you've got a a, a word processor document you want to open in LibreOffice or some music files that are on a USB stick I do that a lot or a movie that you want to open with VLC well I don't have, no in player I guess on here VLC is for MX you open it up, you mount it, you think you're good, you close the file manager, you open up your media player and it's not there because it goes away. So now I've got I've got that setting changed. Now they will hang around. Now it's here. Now you have to manually do the unmounting and actually we give you a little unmounter tool down here in the corner. It's kind of cool. Okay, so that is one way to do it. Now there there there's 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 other ways if you want a file window to always open when you insert your media. I will ask you to check out my videos on Space FM tricks. Um, that will automatically happen if you use the Space FM desktop. Let me show you. I am going to disable the unmount setting here. Um, we'll re-enable it actually that ridiculous setting now we'll close they're gonna they're gone they're trust me they're 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 not mounted anymore they're gonna be empty now I'm gonna change to the a space FM version here real quick it's gonna reload the session no problem now my file manager link is gonna be space FM space FM is opera actually managing the desktop this is gonna be a desktop folder a la Windows, a la GNOME, XFCE. It's a de the desktop's just a folder. It's just a file that's sh displayed. And if I open up the file manager, you can see the devices were already mounted. Um, that's because the Space F FM desktop takes care of that for us. And actually, if I take out the media and insert it, then it will actually, if you're running the Space FM desktop, then Space FM will open. Check out my Space FM Tricks videos. You should be seeing a link appear up above your head, at the, up above at the top of the window someplace here. Check out the videos there to show you if you want to do some interesting things. Like say you don't, want, maybe you want this auto mounting, auto opening feature, but you don't want it to use Space FM for whatever reason. Uh, I show you how to set that up. Uh, there is a Space FM daemon that will run in the background. You can configure Space FM to open the rocks filer when it finds media. Uh, but I, that's a whole different video. It's up on the uh, in the links. Follow them. Check them out. So anyway, that's my list of call it the top five annoyances. Some of you may disagree. Some of you may agree. It doesn't really matter. It's my list. Uh, I think we can all agree that number two, the forum bug, and number one, auto mounting, are a big frustration for new users. All that said, Annex is still a fantastic operating system for older hardware or for running off USB stick. And I still highly recommend it to everybody who asks. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to annex.mepis.org or throw up a post at annex.freeforms.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.